Hello friends, today we will talk about some laws in pharmacy, about some categories of medicines like narcotic drugs, verbal prescription narcotics, control drugs part 1, control drugs part 2, benzodiazepines or other targeted substances and prescription drug. So in this video we will see about Canadian laws for these category of drugs. Among all of them, today I will talk about control drugs only and in later videos we will cover narcotics, FDA, CDSA etc. It comes under pharmacy law. So let's get started. First thing you need to remember for exam is the symbol of control drug which is C under a diamond and it usually appears on the left upper portion of the label. We have three parts of control drugs. These examples are very important. Part 1 we have CNS stimulants. In CNS stimulants we have dextroamphetamine brand name Dexedrine, Methylphenidate, brand name Ritalin, Concerta and Bifentine and other drug is Amphetamine and Dextroamphetamine with the brand name of Adiral XR then Pentobarbital. Remember that barbiturates are in part 2 but there are two barbiturates Pentobarbital and secobarbital which are considered under part 1. Then we have fanmetrazine and lisdexamphetamine brand name Vivens. So these examples are important to remember for exam questions. In part 2 we have most barbiturates except pentobarbital and secobarbital. Then we have butorphenol, brand name Stadol NS. Then we have diethyl propion, brand name Tinoit. Uh, for MCQs students, please try to remember the brand name. For evaluation exam students, you don't have to remember brand name. But it's good. If you remember, in future it will help you. Then we have Nalbufen, brand name Nubane. Then we have Fenteramine, brand name Lonamin. Bla then we have Blergirl, Blergirl Space Tab, which is a combination of Ergotamine, Phenobarbital, Belladonna. Then we have Technal or Fiorinal. These both brands contain ASA, butalbital, and caffeine. Then you have to remember that because barbiturates are normally in part 2, but pentobarbital, secobarbital are not included in part 2, they are included in part 1. Then we have Twinel, a brand name that contains amobarbital and secobarbital. Due to this secobarbital, it is omitted from part 2 and considered as part 1 control drugs. Then in control drugs part 3, we have anabolic steroids and derivative, for example, testosterone or anything that boosts your energy. So these example, there could be one question about this example. Then other questions that could be asked in exam is the um, laws about the purchasing record of part 1, part 2, part 3. Remember that you have to maintain purchasing record in control drug register. There will be a separate register in pharmacy where you keep all the records readily available for auditing purposes for at least 
two to three years. So in some province they required two years and in some province they required three years. Then refill PRN it is not allowed means you will not refill as needed. No, as a pharmacist you will refill as physician directed to you. Okay, then refill or repeats. We have two types of prescription. If it is written, then it is allowed to refill as per physician order for part one, part two and part three. In case of verbal, part two and part three are allowed, but verbal refill of part one controlled drug substance is not allowed. Then we come into part fill. Part fill is something like the physician say you can give 10 tablets but the pharmacist think and assess that dispensing altogether is not safe for, for patient. So he give 5 at a time and then stop 5 for the next time. So this is called part fill. This is allowed in Ontario, but not allowed in British Columbia and Alberta. So remember, if there is a <clears throat> conflict between the uh, province, they will not ask in exam. But for your information, part fill, if you are working in Ontario, it is allowed. And if you are working in British Columbia and uh, Alberta, it is not allowed. Then transfer of controlled drug substances are not allowed, not allowed, not allowed. You will absolutely do not transfer it. Then prescription sale record. You have to keep part one record. Maintain the control drug register or in computer from which a printout must be readily available for auditing purposes for at least two to three years. Then for part two, it is not required. Part three, it is not required. So this chart is important. And I made this chart from the authentic websites of Alberta Pharmacy, Alberta College of Pharmacy. It has given this chart. So I sort out about controlled drug substance part one and controlled drug substance part two. And you can find everything here which I just demonstrate. Then for Ontario College of Pharmacy, there is control drug part one. All details are here. Control drug part two and control drug part three. All details are here. So I summarize all these two and plus this is a, um, this one is from prescription by British Columbia. So this, this details is from British Columbia website. So I took information, control drug part one, control drug preparation part one, control drug part two, and then control drug part three. It has all information. So I merged all three information and made this simple chart to remember for exam. Okay. I will give all the links in my description and if you guys want I can share this document to you too. Then further in this CDS topic we will discuss that description. All CDS part 1, 2, 3 comes under the schedule G of FDA. However I didn't find any schedule G but just remember that all controlled drug substance are the part of schedule G of FDA and it is mentioned here drug listed in part 1 of the schedule to part G of FDA then part G part 2 and part 3 part G of FDA so simply remember that all controlled drug substance from part 1 to 3 are scheduled as uh, are under come under schedule G of FDA then all CDS part product parts 1, 2, 3 contain one straight controlled drug substance plus one non-controlled drug substance ingredient. Then we have 
prescription requirement. So if the prescription is written, faxed or verbal, prescription from an authorized prescriber. In Alberta only a prescriber, authorized prescriber can write prescription. However, in British Columbia, dentist, veterinar veterinarian, nurse practitioner and podiatrist can also write controlled drug substance in prescription. About verbal prescription must be direct from prescriber to the pharmacist only in Alberta. So when a verbal prescription comes for controlled drug substance, only pharmacist can take it. But other than Alberta, in turn, register pharmacy, a student under the direct supervision of pharmacist can take. Other than Alberta means in Ontario, in British Columbia and other provinces, an intern and pharmacy student can also take verbal prescription for controlled drug substances. All verbal prescription must be reduced to writing by the pharmacist and indicate, indicate these things. This is called dispensing record requirements. So name and address of a patient, name, initial and address of prescriber, name, quantity, strength and form of drugs, Direction for use, name and initial of dispensing pharmacist or pharmacy technician, date or dis date of dispensing, prescription number, number of refills when permitted must be indicated, manufacturer of the drug and price charge. This all details are also present here. Prescription requirement with few differences among the provinces but it all has almost same things here prescription requirement we go with the controlled drug substances all details are here okay for exam i don't think so that it is important but for general information and for future when you work as a real pharmacist you have to keep these in mind according to the province you are practicing then we have topic about filing control drug substance a pharmacist or a pharmacy technician who engages in dispensing must ensure that there are dispensing activities that their dispensing activities are recorded in a clear audit trail that identifies all individuals who are involved in the processing of a prescription and dispensing of the drug and the role of each individual. A licensee must ensure that written prescription, transaction record, compounding records and repackaging records for all drugs that have been dispensed, compounded and repackaged are filed systematically and retained for at least two years. Some province wanted two years, some province wanted three years. For example, in British Columbia, you have to maintain the record, sales record up to at least three years. Okay. But in Alberta, it is for two years. So it depends. Again, varies from province to province. So two years past the completion of drug therapy with regard to the prescription or for 42 months, 3.5 years from the date of first fill, whichever is the longest period. Prescription of narcotic and controlled drug must be filed separately from other prescription. Prescription for targeted substance do not have to be filled separately. Now for the purchase record. Upon receiving, a pharmacist must, must record drug name, quantity received, date received, name and address of the licensed dealer, pharmacist or hospital. Records invoices must be readily available on the premises and kept in a manner that permits auditing. This is 
today's topic about control drugs important thing for exam is the examples and the laws about the purchase order transfer prescription so you have to remember this table and this table for exam rest of the stuff you can remember for your practice but i don't think so that they will ask an exam these much details thanks for today and these uh, links i will give in my description box if you want to visit these sites you can click the link and you can check by yourself thank you so much thanks for watching and please share and subscribe